we've seen really good progress over the past year in the UK with regards to open banking and open finance, but there is still so much more that needs to be done. So we were pleased to see the announcement yesterday uh, from the competition watchdog confirming that its roadmap towards the implementation of the technology is now complete. But we still need to push ahead. And I think it's an incredibly important question because when we look at the international competitiveness of UK's financial services and fintech, we need to continue to be the leader in this arena and have to push ahead and looking at things like commercial models and also looking at the education piece as well. So open banking through to open finance and open data more broadly has been a real priority for us at Innovate Finance over the past year, over really the past several years. So you may have seen that earlier this year, a few days after the election, we at Innovate Finance launched our fintech plan for government, which essentially outlined a number of ambitions we believe this new government needs to deliver on if we are going to cement the UK as the best place in the world for financial innovation and financial technology. One of those pillars is specifically focused on open finance, uh, and we believe that our core ambition should be to build here in the UK the world's first smart data economy. That means we have to adopt the smart data statutory powers that ministers need in order to make open banking essentially work effectively uh, and extend that through to open finance and introduce smart data schemes as well. We've also produced a number of reports with our partners including one with our partner KPMG on the roadmap to open finance in the UK, which paints a picture of how the UK can build on open banking's innovation and success to enable further data sharing across financial services. And we've also done another report with our partner Boston Consulting Group on unlocking the potential of open banking in the UK. And this looks at how we can remove key hurdles and really ensure that we've got a more inclusive and transparent government to enable open banking to be the force for good that it very much is. So UK has always been a global leader when it comes to payments. And fintechs in particular over the last several years have played such an important role in modernizing our payments and transforming the payments landscape overall. So we know that contactless payments, for example, initiated by cards, mobile phones, and watches accounted for almost a third of all payments in 2021. Buy now, pay later services are used by a fifth of all people here in the UK. More than 1,200 companies in the UK operate in digital payments, employing over 265,000 people with a combined turnover of 17.6 billion. And we know that payments fintechs or fintechs in the payment space have attracted more than 20 billion pounds of investment over the years. So this is a huge and a really critical sector. When we look at what the payments landscape in the UK will look like going forward, so for example, with the national payments vision, it's absolutely critical that we make sure that the fintech voice is heard in developing this vision. Uh, And that's one of the reasons that we put out at Innovate Finance, our national payments vision for fintech, which specifically identifies how we can get that voice uh, of the disruptors and the third parties into the conversation. So open banking and pushing all the way through to open finance and open data is one of the most exciting chapters that we have unfolding in financial services. But we have to bring everyone together, and that means industry regulators and government, to make sure that we can push ahead and continue this momentum and cement the UK as a leader. So attending this conference and having uh, being privy to some of the great conversations and hearing from some of the leaders in the industry is really critical to push that ahead. 